Hello everyone, this is Ryan here with another deck review for Hocus Pocus. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Golden Cards deck, printed in Taiwan and distributed primarily through MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art in New York. There's not too much information on this deck, so I'm going to take this opportunity to discuss the difference between paper cards and plastic cards, both in how they're manufactured and how they handle. First, let's take a look at the box. This deck comes in a hard plastic case with a cardboard slipcover. The cover is printed in gold foil and it has golden cards stamped across the front and back. The sides are left blank and there's no top or bottom to the cover. The hard plastic case splits open to reveal the cards. Inside, you find standard 52 cards with two jokers. The card backs feature four interlocking ovals encircled in the center and surrounded by patterned boxes with intricate designs inside and all of this is surrounded by a border made up of triangle pointed crosses inside circles. The faces of the cards feature a granulated texture over the entire surface. The pips and indices are polished gold, making them stand out from the background. The variations in the colors for the quartz is achieved by varying the texture of the gold surface. It's hard to describe, but you can easily read the card's value and suit, even though the only color is gold. The artwork of the quartz, the pips, and the indices are all proportionate to the overall card size, which is a bit more narrower than the standard size or poker size playing cards. The Ace of Spades features an elaborate and highly decorated spade. The Jokers are represented by split gestures, possibly juggling balls. Playing cards are usually printed on paper or plastic like this deck. As far as construction goes, paper decks are made from layers of cardstock sandwiching non-transparent glue or non-transparent layer. The ink is printed on the surface and then a finish is applied to help protect the paper and provide the patented glide you're used to. When it comes to plastic, ink is applied to a thin sheet of engineered polyvinyl chloride or PVC. The snap, thickness, and weight are all dictated by the exact chemical makeup of the plastic as well as the forming process. They undergo a varnishing procedure that enhances the printed image and helps increase durability. The major advantage of plastic over paper is longevity. Hand oils, dirt, moisture, even spilt liquids have no lasting effect on the deck. Simply wipe the cards off and they handle like new. They also resist creasing, not to say that they won't bend, but you can take them further than a paper card before a crease appears. Paper's main advantage is the handling and familiarity of feel as well as the variety and popularity. Playing cards, although we refer to them as slick, have a certain level of friction that allows the cards to be gripped easier. The best way to demonstrate this is to squeeze a plastic deck near the ends of its corners and the middle of the deck will slip out a lot easier than if you do the same thing with a paper deck. It all comes down to personal preference. Plastic cards are very flexible and have a very quick rebound. They almost feel soft as opposed to stiff. All the same shuffles can be performed with the same level of ease. Although as you know it takes a bit of practice to get the correct amount of pressure for say a ferro shuffle, you'll have to relearn that pressure again with plastic cards. The cards are a bit slick, but they still stay in packet forms when doing flourishes. The slick nature can be taken advantage of in flourishes that slide cards past, over, or around other cards. The cards fan decently, but will clump until you can adjust to the correct amount of thumb pressure. For those keeping track, the cards measure out to two and a quarter inches by three and a half inches, which is slightly narrower than a poker or standard size deck. The cards measure out to 0.29 millimeters thick and weigh in at 1.723 grams per card. So who are these cards for? Everyone. Give them a try and see if you've been missing out on the modern miracle science of plastics. Game players can add a touch of luxury when dealing out sheets of gold. The collectors can appreciate the bright colors and attractive packaging. The textural look and multi-tone gold add to the appeal. Every cardist should give plastic cards a try for themselves and see if they like them. And considering this deck's flashy color, I can only imagine the attention that will draw in spins, aerials, and fast-paced cuts. Magicians can find a way to add these into a routine as a full deck or even just a single card. And they're slightly thinner and extremely flexible, making them great for back palming and other card manipulations. So if you're looking to expand your personal knowledge of card handling or expand your card collection, you should pick these up. Plastic has its place in the card world and it has its advantages too, but it all boils down to personal preference and how they feel in your hands. So click your way over to hocus-pocus.com, put one of these in your cart and give it a try. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out Xeon's Magic Trick Reviews as well as Luke's Cardistry Tutorials.